The title for this morning's message is Attitude of Fortitude. Attitude of Fortitude. I want you to look with me into your Bibles to 1st Kings chapter 19. I would request all of you to kindly turn your Bibles. Amen. Refer to your Bible as I read this passage for you this morning. 1st Kings chapter 19. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. Yet I believe that God has something special to minister to us. 1st Kings chapter 19 reading from verse 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all how he had slain all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying. So let the gods do to me and more also. If I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down at a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, Behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went to the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Oreb, the mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and a strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire a still small voice. And it was so when Elijah heard it. That he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice on him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? Amen. Hallelujah. Sister, brother, if you have to understand this chapter, we need to know what happened in the previous chapter, in chapter 18. We all know the context very well. As a single man, he stood on Mount Carmel, challenged the 450 prophets of Baal, Amen. And prayed unto the Lord and brought down fire from heaven. Amen. And all the people there cried out with one voice saying, The Lord is God. And he brought down those 450 prophets of Baal down to Brook Kishon and slew them there in the presence of King Ahab. And then Elijah said unto King Ahab, Go up, prepare thy chariot and get thee down, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. And it came to pass and in the meanwhile, the heaven was black with clouds and there was a great rain after three years and six months. And King Hagab rode and went to Jezreel. And Bible says Elijah ran in front of King Hagab's chariot until the gateway to the town of Jezreel. And when he reached the entrance of Jezreel, Elijah left Ahab to go to his palace and Elijah went away to his destination. Now King Hagab told his wife Jezebel, all that had happened and what Elijah did to the prophet Zebel. And Jezebel, that wicked woman, the wife of King Ahab, was very furious. She hardened her heart. Church sons raise melt wax, but it hardens the clay. And her heart was so hard and she was so very angry. And she just wanted to kill Elijah. Because she was feeding those 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of Groves, amen, every day the Bible says these prophets were eating at Jezebel's table. They were very special to her and now those 450 prophets of Baal 
were killed by Elijah and she was so angry the Bible says she sent a messenger to Elijah to say that she's going to kill him amen I want you to refer your Bibles to verse 2 please first King chapter 19 verse 2 then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah saying so let the gods do to me and more also if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time judge the Queen's command gave Elijah only one day's time to remain alive this is how the devil returns God's people amen this is how Goliath to turn God's people morning and evening for 40 days and I want to tell you the devil is adopting the same strategy even today to put some kind of fear into God's people amen the fear of tomorrow the fear of sickness the fear of pain the fear of some kind of insecurity the fear of rejection fear of some people I don't know to whom God is speaking this morning but the Lord says do not be afraid of their faces for I will deliver thee and I will be with thee say the Lord amen they shall come against thee they shall fight against you but they shall not prevail against thee because I am with you say the Lord to deliver thee hallelujah blessed be the name of the Lord Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah through to turn him church how many of you know even today the devil has got some messengers amen to send some kind of message to, to turn you amen to, to weigh you down to put some thoughts of doubt and disbelief and you know, so that you will be gripped with fear amen the devil is trying to send a messenger to you in order to convey some kind of message so that you will be depressed you'll be disheartened you'll be disappointed you'll be discouraged amen hallelujah but we need to turn a deaf ear to those messengers the devil is trying to send on a way because we have got a different message from God and that message is the Lord says I am with you and fear not amen. hallelujah Hallelujah. The message the Lord gives you and me this morning, the Lord says, Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Somebody shout, Amen. amen. Jezebel sent a messenger. Jezebel sent a messenger. The devil is trying to send a messenger to convey some message. It could be through a phone call, it could be through some person. It could be through someone in your workplace. It could be some, through some situation in your life. Or it could be through some problem. The devil is trying to convey a message of doubt and unbelief and fear and discouragement and depression. This morning the Lord says, turn a deaf ear to that message. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In the life of Paul, the devil was trying to send a message through a thorn in the flesh. How many of you, hallelujah, are aware of the passage of scripture where Apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7, Apostle Paul says, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of revelations that was given unto me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan. And lest I should be exalted above measure. And Apostle Paul says, For this thing I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. But the Lord said unto me, My grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. My grace is sufficient for you. And my strength is made perfect in weaknesses. Hallelujah. That the power of God may rest upon me. Paul says, most gladly therefore will I draw the glory in my infirmity. That the power of God may rest upon me. Amen. And Paul says, therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Amen. How many of you can say this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Church, I want to tell you, God is speaking to you this morning. Apostle Paul was talking about a thorn. He was talking about, uh, he says, a thorn, it, a thorn that was given a thorn to, to me. A thorn in the flesh. It was given a thorn in the flesh. He goes to say, even more specific, he says, it's a messenger of Satan. It's a messenger of Satan. Trying to convey some kind of message. But I love what he said. Paul says, I don't want to, I refuse to look at the thorn. I refuse to listen to the message that he was supposed to give me. I refuse to look at the thorn through my eyes of destruction. But instead, I take the thorn of grief to the thorn of grace and turn it into my ministry. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Church Paul says it's a messenger of Satan. Amen. He prayed for it. But God said, I'm not going to remove the thorn from your flesh, but my grace is sufficient for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there anybody who has got a thorn in the flesh, suffering from some kind of problem in your life? You, it seemed to be chronic. And you've been praying about it and nothing seemed to happen. This morning God is speaking to you. And through the thorn of life, the devil wants to convey a message of doubt and unbelief and fear. But I want you to tell you this morning, better turn a deaf ear to the message of what the devil is trying to say. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Apostle Paul says the message that the devil trying to convey to me did not work in my life. Did not work in my life. Cannot work in my life. How many of you can say this morning. You said in, you may try to convey my message. Through anything. Maybe through a thorn of life. Through some circumstance. Or through somebody. But I tell you. I want you to know devil. It cannot work in my life. Because I am a child of God. I am anointed. I am redeemed. I am washed with the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I know that everything will work together for my good. Because I love the Lord. And I have been called according to his purpose. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Apostle Paul calls the thorn in the flesh as the messenger of Satan. This attack was supposed to get into my head. This attack was supposed to work in my thinking, to make me angry, to make me bitter, to doubt God. Sister, brother, I don't know how many of you are experiencing this. But he says, the messenger of Satan, hallelujah, the thorn in my flesh trying to convey a message so that I would doubt the love of God. But that's not going to work in me. Because I know whom I serve. Because I know whom I believe. Hallelujah. I know my God is faithful. Hallelujah. Satan is trying to convey a message to me. What was the message? What is the message the devil is trying to convey? I'm sure that the devil wanted Paul to hear words like, God doesn't love you. Amen. Just like when you get the attack with a thorn in the flesh, you know, you hear a little whisper, the message from Satan trying to tell you, God doesn't hear your prayers. God isn't for you. God doesn't care about you. Where's God when you're hurting? Why bad things happen to good people? All those kinds of messages the devil is trying to convey. If God is there, why did he let the tragedy happen? And that's a message that is supposed to come when the thorn in the, in the flesh hurt us and when our hearts are broken. But church, this morning I want to tell you, Hallelujah, if you are a child of God and if you know who your God is, Hallelujah, we can turn a deaf ear to the message what the devil is trying to convey. Hallelujah. Paul says, rather I'm going to turn that thorn into a blessing and let it keep me humble. Hallelujah. Lest I'm exalted about measure. Hallelujah. And I take that as a blessing from the Lord. Hallelujah. To keep me humble all the time so that God can give me more revelation and I can be a blessing to other people. Hallelujah. 
And he says I'm going to turn that misery into my ministry. Hallelujah. Because I know God is doing something in my life. And I know that something good will come out of the thorn. Something hallelujah, will come out. Something beautiful will come out of that experience. And I know that God is on my side. Hallelujah. And who can be against me? Friend, I want to tell you, that's what God is doing in your life and my life. So don't be discouraged. Dear brother, sister, is the devil trying to frighten you? Is he trying to mock at you? Is he trying to, to turn you, put, put some kind of fear in you, trying to discourage you or depress you? Listen, Satan is always afraid of you and me because we are the children of the most high God and we are people anointed by the Holy Ghost. Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah. I want you to think for a moment, why should she send a messenger to Elijah if she really wanted to kill him? She could have sent some people, amen, stayed away to kill him instead of sending a messenger. But she did not send people to kill him. She only sent a messenger. Messenger can only convey a message, but he cannot harm him anyway. Hallelujah. Jezebel knew very well that she cannot kill the man of God because that man of God, hallelujah, was in the very plan of God and nobody can touch him. In fact, she, she was afraid of Elijah. Friend, I want to tell you, the devil is afraid of you and me. Hallelujah. But Jezebel was trying to, hallelujah, hide a fear within the words of threat. And even today, the devil is trying to put fear into you, trying to turn you. But I tell you in the name of Jesus, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I had been in many places where demons were cast out from people. Amen. And I've seen in most of the cases, invariably, amen, the devil always used to challenge God's people, tries to threaten God's people. That's the devil's tactics. But I want to tell you that's a false threat because he is a defeated enemy. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. But Apostle James says in James 4, 7, Submit yourself unto God and this is the devil. Come on, finish it. He will flee from you. How many of you believe that? Hallelujah. Submit yourself unto God and this is the devil. He will flee from you. The way you say that, you know, it seems to me that you are afraid of the devil. <laughs> Submit yourself unto God and resist the devil. Come aloud, church. Come aloud, still. He will flee from you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm talking to you this morning on the subject attitude of fortitude. If you feel the devil is trying to turn you, intimidate you, or trying to put some kind of fear in you, or trying to depress you or discourage you, God wants us to have a right attitude. I want to share with you this morning four different kinds of attitude that you and I need to have so that we can overcome those discouragement and depression and we can have unusual Holy Ghost boldness and courage to face the enemy so that you and I can be victorious. Amen. Attitude number one. Hallelujah. Make a note of it. God is speaking to you. Attitude number one. Quit fear and have faith quit fear and have faith hallelujah quit fear and have faith it is sad that elijah was afraid of the false threat of jezebel and ran for his life church do you know when fear came into elijah do you know when fear came into elijah I refer to your bible to verse 3 First Kings chapter 19 and verse 3. When he, come on, saw that. When he saw that. What did he see? What did he see? Now Elijah was seeing something. When he saw that. What did Elijah see? He was seeing something in his mind which are not true. 
Beware of those things the devil is trying to put in your thought, in your thinking, in your mind. And the devil wants to see something which are not real. When he saw that, he saw in his mind the wicked, ugly, angry face of Jezebel. He saw in his mind that he was being arrested, captured, put behind bars. He saw in his mind that he was being paralyzed. He saw in his mind that he was being bound with fetters. He saw in his mind that all his ministry is ceasing. He saw in his mind that he's not able to do anything. He saw in his mind that he had become so weak and paralyzed. He saw in his mind that it's like being killed by this wicked woman. Church, I want to ask you this morning, was it real what he, what he saw? Was it real what he saw? No, absolutely not. Amen. In that situation, instead of seeing his real God, he began to see unreal things. Amen. And that's the reason for his fear. I want to tell you this morning, the devil is trying to put a lot of things in your mind and he makes you to think and brood over and contemplate on many things so that you can see things with your mind which are not real but putting fear, a lot of fear into your hearts and minds. Amen. Think of Peter for a moment. The disciples saw Jesus Christ walking on the water and they thought him to be a spirit and there was so many trouble in the hearts. But Jesus said, fear not, it is I. And immediately when Peter heard that, he said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come so that I can come to you. And Jesus said, come. Then Peter stepped out of his ship and then started to walk on the water to go to Jesus Christ. And the Bible says in John's gospel, chapter 14, verse 30, when he saw, what did he see? When he saw, he started more than what he could see with his physical eyes. He started to see things in his mind. Peter who walked on the water at the command of Jesus began to sink in a moment later. And he started to see those raging waves coming beating against him. He began to see with his mind that he was being, hallelujah, hallelujah, that he's sinking, that he's being drowned, hallelujah, capsized. And he saw with his mind that he's being suffocated, hallelujah, all these things he saw in his mind. And fear gripped his heart. The more he feared, the more he started to sink. Church, beware of those thoughts the devil is trying to put in your heart mine amen hallelujah that's why apostle paul says let your mind be renewed amen hallelujah be not conformed to this world but let your mind be renewed let your mind be renewed let your mind let your thinking let your thoughts be changed hallelujah the devil always tries to put the negative things in your mind so that your mind can see things which are not true Hallelujah. Elijah ran away from, Je from, Je from Jezreel to Beersheba almost 100 miles. This running was not in the power of God. This running was not in the power of God. This running was because of fear of life. Brother, sister, many times we try to run with our own strength because of fear. We try to run away from a situation. We try to run away from our problems. We try to run away from our circumstances. I tell you, how in those times at, and such times, we are not running in the power of God. We are running with our own strength. If we try to run in our own strength, we will be depressed. We will be exhausted. We will become tired. What does the Bible say? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength and mount up the wings like eagles they shall walk and come on they shall walk and not weary they shall run and not faint but here from Jezreel to Beersheba it was almost 100 miles Elijah was running with his own strength not in the power of God and he was so depressed amen and now Elijah asked his servant to stay there and he ran away Oh, he was gripped with fear. Friend, I want to tell you, as sin is a choice, fear is also a choice. Fear is a reverse of faith. Think of this man, a man who did great exploits for God, now running for his life. 
is life is a warning to you and me my brother sister we are expected to remain calm even in the midst in the midst of fierce storm amen and whom did he fear an ordinary woman who was acting as an agent of satan elijah knew for certain that god's judgment would come upon her yet he feared her i tell you this was unwanted unwarranted unnecessary fear amen hallelujah look at elijah a man who destroyed the prophets of baal a man who brought down fire from heaven amen what is happening to him now friend god is speaking to you what is your fear today why is that you are fearful what has happened to you why are you afraid bible says god has not given us a spirit of fear but a power and of love and sound mind hallelujah glory to god friend devil is the source of fear the devil sends a fear in order to paralyze your future progress amen amen fear silently robs away our good health and happiness fear destroys both the vision of truth and the power of right decision nervous and mental breakdown are primarily due to fear fear always springs hallelujah from ignorance i want to tell you fear has got many eyes and can see things which are not true the philosophy of fear is trying to see a black cat in a dark room where there is no cat that's a philosophy of fear but elijah feared church i want to tell you it's quite possible that fear will come upon you but the bible says time and time again fear not for i am with you fear not for i am with you amen listen fear can lead you to flight or fight or fate all living faith is acquired not inherited for the people of faith there is no place for worry church remember this one thing remember this always that faith is stronger than fear how many of you believe that faith is stronger than fear hallelujah as light is stronger than darkness faith is always stronger than fear hallelujah light can dispel darkness but darkness cannot dispel light in the same way hallelujah faith can dispel all kinds of fear blessed be the name of the lord faith is stronger than fear martin luther once said faith must trample under foot all the reason and sense and understanding sometimes we begin to reason out things and we give room for fear amen but this morning i feel in my spirit that god is going to set you free and god is going to give you a tremendous deliverance from the spirit of fear so that you and i will have the holy ghost boldness to face challenges in life hallelujah do not be afraid god's people draw near to god run only when god commands you to run till then stand firm trusting in his promises because god is with you god is with you amen quit fear and have faith hallelujah quit fear and have faith amen hallelujah when you face fear in your life start rebuking it in the name of jesus maybe because fear of future maybe be fear of insecurity maybe fear of death or fear of change or fear about your children or fear of tomorrow or fear of some sickness hallelujah rebuke it in the name of jesus because god has given us power and authority somebody shout amen, amen. hallelujah glory to god amen don't forget this first attitude quit fear and have faith number 2 avoid solitude and have fellowship avoid solitude and have fellowship have fellowship turn your bible to that same passage of scripture in first king chapter 19 let's read verses 3 and 4 first king chapter 19 verses 3 and 4 when he saw that he arose and went for his life and came to bear sheba which belonged to judah and left his servant there left his servant there 
But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down at Juni for three and he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. Not the phrase Elijah left his servant there and became lonely. The very sight of others irritated him. Amen. It talks about Elijah's self-imposed isolation. When you're overstrained and stressed, even the presence of your loved ones will irritate you. But that's a time you need fellowship of God's people. Hallelujah. Church, don't forget Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. You need not turn your Bible. You know it by heart. The Bible says, forsake not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. Amen. But exhort one another for so much so you see the day approaching. The coming of the Lord is at hand. So do not forsake the assembling of yourself together. Amen. But you must learn to pay the cost of fellowship. For how many of you know, fellowship is not that cheap. Fellowship is not free. There is a cost to be paid for fellowship. What is the cost? Denying yourself. Unless you deny yourself, you cannot enjoy the fellowship. Amen. You know what I mean to say? Be willing to get along with those who are different from you. That's a cost that you and I need to pay for fellowship. Be willing to get along with those who are different from you. Amen. It is there God makes you fruitful. It is there God begins to bless you. Amen. Remember the Lord said, unless a corn of wheat fall to the ground and die, it cannot bring forth much fruit. Amen. The cost of fellowship is self-denial. Amen. Crucifying the high. I'm going to deny myself. Remember Jesus said, if, you, if any man wants to follow me, let him deny himself. Amen. Hallelujah. Friend, I want to tell you, only when you rub shoulders with others, amen, the rough edges of your life can be smoothened. It is there God begins to bless you. The Bible says, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. And the Lord says, it is there I command my life and peace and joy and blessing. Hallelujah. It is there we are sanctified. It is sanctified. I remember having shared this thought last Sunday in our, with our Tamil congregation about the glory of fellowship. Amen. I was talking to them about the red, redwood trees of California. It's something amazing. Redwood trees of California. Amen. They grow up to great heights. Of course, there are larger trees that we know that grow up to great heights, but they have deep roots deep down in the soil. But the speciality of these redwood trees in California, they grow up to 300 feet up in the air, but the root is go down only three feet. Can you imagine a tree that can go up 300 feet up in the air and the root only goes down three feet? How in the world does this, you know, does this tree can stand the storm and face the onslaught of the storm and not topple over? The answer is found in the root system. Root system, you know what happens? Although these trees uh, grow up, you know, 300 feet up in the air, the root goes only 3 feet, but after going 3 feet, it spreads out. Amen. It spreads out and it finds the root of other redwood trees. And it is intertwined and linked up with one another. Hallelujah. So that those trees can stand strong and stand the test of time and storm. Hallelujah. You know, one tree tells the other, I will never let you down. I will never let you fall. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. It goes three feet deep, spreads out, finds other root, the root of other redwood trees and they are intertwined and linked up, hooked up together. Hallelujah. Now when the storm blows, it is not against one single solitary tree, but it is against the whole forest. Hallelujah. And one tree holds on to the other and one tree says, I will never let you down. Amen. 
probably you are weak now and I am strong and I am holding on to you. Tomorrow I will become weak and you will be strong and you will be holding on to me. Hallelujah. That's church. That's fellowship. Hallelujah. We hold on to each other and say, I need your prayers. You better pray for me and I pray for you. I pray for your family and you pray for my family. I touch you in faith and you touch me in faith. I will never let you down. I never let you, let you go. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Friend, that's the power of community. That's the power of church. That's the kind of fellowship that God wants you and me to have. Amen. The thought that got me is, the forest ranger who gave this report said, I will take you to those trees in the forest, those trees which have been dead so many years ago, but still standing. Amen. In that forest, there are some trees grown to great heights, but almost dead, almost dead, but still standing. The only reason is, the other trees, the roots linked up together with this tree, and other tree says, I will never let him fall. Amen. Who knows sometime, hallelujah, sometime later he can come back to life. Hallelujah. So I will never let him fall down. I will still hold on to him. Friend, that's the power of community. That's the power of church. Get rooted and grounded, hallelujah, in some small groups or in some ministry or get into the choir or some activity in the church hooked up with other believers of like-mindedness and of like faith. Hallelujah. So that when you face the stuff, you don't face it alone. Somebody's with you. Hallelujah to say, I will never let you down. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God has called us into a holy fellowship. Hallelujah. So that you and I will stand together in unity and fight against all the horn slots of the devil and take victory in this last days. Are you with me this morning? Amen. I know God is speaking to us, brother, sister. Amen. It's very, very important. Avoid solitude and have fellowship. Amen. The third attitude. The third attitude. Be not impatient, but have forbearance. Be not impatient, but have forbearance. Turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 19. We are going to read verse 4 now. Verse 4 of 1 Kings chapter 19. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness... And came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. And said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father's. Amen. Elijah went far out in the wilderness. Elijah went to the dangerous place which God had not sent him to. Church, this is the first time, listen to this. This is the first time that Elijah choosing his own destination. At all other times, he was directed by God. He was directed to go to Hagab. He was directed to go to Cherith. He was directed to go to Sarifath. And wherever he went, hallelujah, under the direction of God, he enjoyed peace, joy and victory. But now he's taking his own course and he lost the divine peace and joy. Friend, God is talking to somebody. It's one thing that God leads his people to the wilderness like he did with Moses, like he did with Paul, like he did with Philip. But it is totally another thing that believers themselves choose their own wilderness. God is talking to somebody. The Lord says, my child, you better not choose your own wilderness like Elijah. When Elijah went, hallelujah, to a solitary place into the deep wilderness, into the desert, he was not directed by God, but he chose his own destination. Amen. In the case of Elijah, this was again self-imposed wilderness. Friend, if God leads you to the wilderness, he will provide. Amen. We all know that God led the people of Israel through the wilderness for 40 long years and they did not lack anything and God provided them everything. And he will manifest his power if he leads us into the wilderness as he did with Philip of Samaria. Amen. But hastily running away from your situation, don't get into self-imposed wilderness. I don't know to whom God is speaking this morning. The Lord says, my child, don't 
Easily run into your own wilderness. Hallelujah. Don't try to run away from where you are now. Trying to run away from your problem. Trying to run away from your circumstance. Trying to run away from your situation. Where God has placed you. And you better be patient and have forbearance. Amen. Be there till God takes your way. Be there. Be patient. Think of Elijah. That self-imposed wilderness led him to a state of depression, discouragement and despair. And then don't blame God for your wilderness. Amen. Many a time we choose our own wilderness and then we tend to blame God for it. Amen. Elijah should have stood firm in the place where God had placed him boldly instead of running away from that situation. God is talking to somebody. The Lord says, don't run away. Don't run away from your situation. Hallelujah. It may be tough. It may be very hard. It may not be comfortable. It may not be as you expect. But God says to somebody, don't run away from the place where I have placed you. I have a plan and purpose to keep you there. And I will exalt you. And I will never make you, hallelujah, the tail. And I will make you the head. You will not be beneath, but you will be above. For I have a plan and purpose in keeping you in that place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Think of David for a moment. When Goliath came against God's people to turning their morning and evening for 40 days, all the people of Israel fled and they ran away. But this one young lad stood there. Hallelujah. In the power of God and God gave him the victory. Amen. Amen. When all other Israelites, when they said, oh, we cannot stand this uh, Goliath. And they ran away for the life. Uh, but this one man stood there. Hallelujah. And God gave him the victory. Are you that one man this morning? Are you that one woman this morning? And say, Lord, I'm going to stand firm in the place where you have put me. I'm not going to run away from a situation. I know you are with me. And you will make me victorious. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory and honor to God. See that verse 4 again. In that wilderness, in that wilderness, Elijah made some wrong decisions. Sitting under the juniper tree, he said, Lord, it is an half. Yet come to a wits and corn, a end of the tether. Have you been like that in your life? Is there anybody under the juniper tree now? Elijah was both spiritually and physically exhausted and tired. When the body and the mind is tired, you will not be able to think or act or write. Friend, that's the time the devil can lead you to wrong thinking and wrong decisions in life. Elijah was very tired and he desired death. And he was very presumptuous and unwise in praying this prayer. He said, Lord, it is enough. I don't want to live anymore. Take away my life. I'm not better than my father's. Amen. But thank God. I really thank God. Because at that time, God understood the state of that man. Hallelujah. God understood the state of that man. We would have rebuked such a man. We would have rebuked such a man. But God didn't. But God in his love and mercy sent an angel and fed that man. Hallelujah. Church, sometimes when you're under depression, sometimes, sometimes you don't know what you speak. Sometimes, you know, you get irritated and you blurt out. And uh, hallelujah. And such circumstances, people don't understand you at all. Amen. People will never understand you. Your own people will not understand you. But I want to tell you, at that state, God understands you and me. Amen. Hallelujah. God understands. God will understand you. Amen. He will understand all your weaknesses. I often tell people, when you are tired, hallelujah, when you are exhausted in your body and your mind, do not take any decision. Rest for a while and have a good sleep. And when you're fresh, you'll be able to think better and take right decision with the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And when people are tested sore and they are solely discouraged, some of them desire death. Is there anybody who say, I don't want to live anymore in this world? Friend, listen to this. It's a thought from the devil. The very thought is from the devil. Elijah came to the conclusion, hallelujah, that he doesn't want to live anymore in this world. And it was his own choice. His fear, his isolation, his wilderness, all his own choice. And he says in verse 4, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life. He was filled with self-pity. This is always a dangerous state to get into. Amen. 
And in verse 5, to lead him out of depression, God first let Elijah rest and eat. Then God confronted him with the need to return to his mission in life. And Elijah's mission was not yet over. And the Lord said, Elijah, you have got still, you have got some work to do. Your journey is too great. You have to go a long way. Amen. Brother, sister, when you face great problems or crisis in life, the answer is not death. The answer is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the answer. Amen. Sometimes when we face problems, when we face crisis, we think the solution is death. Don't we? Amen. Sometimes we say, Lord, it's better I die. I don't want to live anymore. This morning the Lord says, death is not the solution. Jesus Christ is the solution to all your problems. I want to tell you, church, this morning, if you stay unmovable, trusting the Lord with your unshakable faith, God will act on your behalf. God will intervene. God will even shut the mouth of the lions and He will remove the burden of your dead miraculously by His power and by using the means of your hard work. Amen. Amen. Elijah prayed sincerely. What was that sincere prayer? Take away my life, Lord. Sometimes people pray the prayer very sincerely. <laughs> Take away my life, Lord. I'm not better than my fathers. Friend, we know God answers all of our prayers, but not this one prayer. Amen. We know God answered all the prayers of Elijah, but not this prayer, no matter how sincere and earnest it was. Amen. Thank God he does not answer all our prayers. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. He never answer any prayer which is outside the will of God. The desire to die is your own will. Don't expect God to answer that prayer. Amen. God may answer all your prayers, but not this one prayer. You know why? You know why? You know why? Because Jesus Christ is praying something else for you and me. In John's Gospel, chapter 17, in our turn your Bible, you know what Jesus prayed to the Father? Father, I pray not that thou should take these people out of this world, but I pray, hallelujah, that thou should keep them from evil. Amen. Hallelujah. So the prayer of what Jesus does for you and me is totally different from what you and I are praying. Hallelujah. Sometimes we pray, Lord, take my life, but the Lord says, don't take this fellow out of this world, but keep this fellow from evil, Lord. <laughs> hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. See the prayer of Elijah in that same verse. He says, I'm not better than my fathers. Elijah, did God love you and choose you because you were better than your father? No. Amen. It is because of God's goodness and God's grace that God loved you and chose you and answered your prayers on three different occasions. Amen. When he prayed earnestly that it shouldn't rain, it rained not. On Mount Carmel, when you prayed and asked me to send down fire, I did. I sent down the fire. And after three years and six months, when he prayed and asked me to send down rain, I did. I sent down the rain. But Elijah, it's my goodness and grace upon you that I did not answer your fourth prayer when you asked me to take away your life. Hallelujah. Elijah, your God lives. This morning, cast all your burdens upon the Lord. Cast all your cares upon Him. For He careth for you. Friend, you may be in the wilderness today. You may feel so lonely, wanting to die and not to live anymore. But God says, I am with you. I've got a plan and purpose for you. Hallelujah, you better have hope in me. Hallelujah. Don't be discreet. Come out of your cave of depression. Come out of the pit of self-pity. Hallelujah. For I have a great plan for you. Amen. See the experience of David. He says in Psalm 42, need not turn a Bible. It says, why art thou cast down, O my soul? Why art thou discredited within me? Hope in God, yet I shall praise thee, who is the health of my countenance and my God. Amen. Why art thou cast down my soul? He was stung in his own soul when he was surrounded by enemy, hunted by Saul, when his own son Absalom rose against him, when everything turned against him. He was stung in his own soul and says, Why art thou cast down on my soul? Why art thou disquieted within me? Hoping God. 
hope in God. Yet shall I praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. Friend, trust God for a miracle. He cares for you. Hallelujah. Refer to your Bible verse 6. 1 King chapter 19 verse 6. Elijah when he was awakened saw a cake of bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. Hot bread and fresh water. But he did not see the angel. He did not see the angel. The angel woke him up. Awakened him. But when he got up, he did not see the angel. All that he saw was just a cake of bread baked over hot coals and, and a jar of water. Amen. He saw only the provision. He did not see the angel. He did not see the angel. It's an invisible hand of divine provision. Friend, I want to tell you, if you are in some need this morning, you are trying to see somebody who can help you. But the Lord says, you will not see the angel. I will not show you the angel. I will not tell you who is going to help you. But you will see my provision. Hallelujah. You will see your needs are met through most unexpected sources. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In an earlier occasion, God used the raiment to feed Elijah. Probably even this time, I was, look, was looking up in the air, seeing, trying to see whether any raven flying over. Hallelujah. But God had a different plan and purpose to feed this man. And this time, not through a raven, but through an angel. But he did not see an angel. He saw the provision of the Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes we try to see an angel. <laughs> We, we try to see who can help us. We want to see whether that sister can help me, whether that brother can help me. But this morning the Lord says, you will not see the angel. Hallelujah. But you will see my provision because I am faithful. Hallelujah. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The angel of the Lord awakened Elijah who had slept again and said, Get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. Get up and eat. I've cooked a meal for you. Come on Elijah, get up and eat. I've cooked a meal for you. Church, do you know who I think baked that bread? Can anyone make a guess? Who baked that bread? Who baked that bread? Oh, I believe it was the same one who prepared that breakfast on the shore of Galilee one morning after the resurrection. How many of you, hallelujah, are aware of that passage? Hallelujah. When the disciples were so depressed, hallelujah, they thought the master had already gone. He's dead and gone. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus Christ, and one day morning after his resurrection, prepared the breakfast of the disciples, and he said, come and dine with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All glory and honor to God. And verse 8, when the angel told Elijah that he had to travel a long way, he realized where he was and that he should not stay there anymore, but he should go into the presence of the Lord. Bible says, Elijah rose up. Elijah rose. This morning God is talking to somebody. The Lord says, my child, rise up from your depression. Rise up from your state of despair. Rise up from your state of disappointment. I have a great task ahead of you. I have a great plan and purpose to fulfill in your life. The Bible says with the strength of the meat, he walked for 40 days and 40 nights. Hallelujah. Until he reached Oreb, the Mount of God. Mount of God. Friend, I want to tell you this morning. You and I can walk in this waste, howling wilderness only when we receive our spiritual food. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just imagine Elijah? He was trying to run from Jezreel to Beersheba. That hundred miles with his own strength, he was unable. He got so exhausted and tired. But now, hallelujah, the angel of the Lord fed him. He hid something from God. He hid the heavenly manna. Hallelujah. And he walked 40 days and 40 nights. Hallelujah. Reached the Mount of Horeb. Friend, if you want to walk in this waste howling wilderness, I want to tell you, you cannot walk with your own strength. You need to be fed with heavenly manna, the word of God. Hallelujah. The spiritual food that we receive on Sunday, week after week, will enable you and me to walk with God in this wilderness. 
Amen. I feel sorry for some people who miss the church on Sunday morning. Hallelujah. And they are, hallelujah, not fed by God's word. And I tell you, they cannot walk in the power of God. They try to walk in their own strength. And throughout the week, they get depressed and exhausted and tired. And they try to do things with their own strength. And they fail miserably. Amen. That's the reason believers should never forsake the assembly of ourselves together on every Sunday of the Lord's day because the law word of God strengthens us day by day. And Sunday evening and Wednesday Bible study for extra strength. Somebody say amen. amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Elijah who desired death due to discouragement now goes all the way to Mount Horeb seeking God. Amen. Now he doesn't want to die. Now he doesn't want to die. Why? Because his attitude changed. Hallelujah. After receiving the spiritual food, he's strengthened. He doesn't want to die anymore. But he wants to see God. He's seeking God. Climbing all the way up to Mount Horeb into the presence of the Lord. Dear brother, sister, if you're discouraged, if you're depressed, Receive the word of God. Eat the heavenly manna. Go to the word of God. Be fed with God's word. So that you can walk in the power of God. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. One more thought before I close this morning. The fourth attitude. Fourth attitude. Stop fretting and have fortitude. Stop fretting and have fortitude. Verse 9. First Kings chapter 19 and verse 9. And he came thither unto the cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? Elijah came to Oreb to meet God. Instead of going to the top of the mountain, he entered a cave and hiding himself. He was sidetracked. No, go on. Get over your guilt and go on. A person who has gone back from God is always afraid to meet God. Bible says, Adam and Eve hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Elijah, God did not encourage you. God did not feed you miraculously just for you to hide yourself. Now God spoke to Elijah and asked him, What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? Friend, listen to me. This is the first time that God ever questioned Elijah. God had never questioned Elijah before. This is the first time that God had ever questioned Elijah. Amen. Until Elijah had been to Cherith, God did not question him. He went to Carmel, God did not question him. He went to Jezreel, God did not question him. In all these places, God never questioned Elijah. But this time, Amen. When he was in the darkness of the cave with a murmuring heart, God questioned Elijah and asked him, What are you doing here? I have not called you to hide yourself, but I have called you to stand on the mount before the Lord. Amen. Probably guilty of his own mistake and unbelief. He was trying to hide himself from God. But friend, I want to tell you, God appointed place for you is not inside the cave, but on the mountain top. Amen. God asked him, what are you doing here? And in verse 10, Elijah gives so many reasons. He says, Lord, I am alone. My enemies are so powerful. They are seeking my life and so on. He had an unbalanced view of life. Church, in times of depression, everything is, gets out of focus. You won't see clearly, out of perspective. And little problems become greatly exaggerated in our minds. And we become negative in our thoughts and an attitude. But the same Elijah, I want you to think for a moment. This Elijah says, Lord, I am alone. Enemies are against me. They are seeking to kill me. But the same Elijah, earlier he was standing on Mount Carmel. He was standing alone. But he did not feel lonely. You know why? Because he had faith in God. Hallelujah. The same man who once stood on Mount Carmel as a solitary man, he did not feel lonely because he had tremendous faith in God and he had the presence of God. But now in the state of depression, he had temporarily lost his faith in God and lost the presence of God. And therefore, he felt so lonely. Is there anybody who feels so lonely? Amen. God is speaking to you. Have faith in God. Hope in God. Hallelujah. Don't lose heart. 
come into the presence of the Lord, brother, sister, of a victory or defeat or joy or sorrow, all depends on God's presence. Amen. This morning the Lord says, do not mourn looking at your circumstances. Think how you can overcome them through the help of God. There is a way out for every problem you face if God is with you. Amen. If God is with you, there is a way out for every problem, every crisis you face in your life. I want to prophesy this morning, hallelujah, I don't know to whom God is speaking. The Lord says, your, atmos your atmosphere will change slowly. And there will be a turn for the better. You will feel the change of the weather, a welcome breeze, and a pleasant smell of the abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord says, my child, my son, my daughter, things will change in your life. Your circumstance will change. Hallelujah. There is a way out from your trouble. I will bring you out. The Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but I will deliver him out of all his troubles. Somebody shout amen. amen. Glory to God. In verse 11, the Lord said to Elijah, Come out of darkness. Come out, Elijah, from your hiding place. And God said, Go out and stand upon the mountain in the presence of the Lord. For the Lord is about to pass you by. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord is about to pass you by. Friend, the Lord is passing by. The Lord is passing by. Don't, you need not hide yourself in the cave anymore. Come out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. When Elijah gave so many reasons for his depression, he said, Lord, I'm all alone. Enemies against me, they are seeking my life, seeking to kill me. Friend, hallelujah. You know what the remedy the Lord gave him? Stand before the Lord. Elijah, are you depressed? Are you disappointed? Are you disgraced? The remedy, the panacea, the solution. Come and stand before the Lord. Hallelujah. Friend, in times of depression, in times of loneliness, in times of distress, in times of despair, the solution is come and stand before the Lord. Come and stand before the Lord. Hallelujah. Your circumstance will change. How many of you believe this morning? Blessed be the name of the Lord. As I was meditating on this, Especially about this man Elijah. Early this morning today, the Holy Spirit of God started ministering in a very special way. Elijah was a very rough and rugged man. Amen. By nature. He was a very fearless man. For this man to be depressed is something amazing. If this could happen to Elijah, then how much more it can happen to you and me. Amen. Elijah was a rough and rugged man. Did you ever notice that God put a badger skin around all of beauty and wealth and workmanship of the tabernacle? If you understand the whole Testament tabernacle, precious things inside the tabernacle, table of showbread inside the tabernacle, golden lampstand inside the tabernacle, altar of incense inside the tabernacle, the glory of the Lord inside the tabernacle, but God had covered the tabernacle with a rough, rude, cruel badger skin. Amen. What for? So that he can weather the storm. He can stand the test of time. Nothing can shake the tabernacle. Friend, this morning, God is speaking to you. You are the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. You are the tabernacle. Hallelujah. There are glorious things within you. But God has covered you and me with bad skin so that we can weather the storm, stand the test of time. Hallelujah. So that we will be unmovable, unshakable. Nothing can move us. David says, the Lord is at my right hand and I shall not be moved. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Badger skin was the exterior of something fine and beautiful. And the exterior of Elijah was like that. My friend, today, today may be a very happy day for you. But listen to me, somebody, God is speaking. Today may be a very happy day for you. You may think that you are sufficient for the battles of life. But I want to tell you, the journey through life is too great for you. The journey, the journey through life is too great for you. You are going to need a savior in your life sometime or other. Amen. You are going to need a helper. 
Elijah, as rough and rugged he was, he needed God at the particular at this particular time. Amen. Think of Elijah. On that day of depression, on that day of discouragement, that day was a day of hypertension, frustration, sterility and frigidity and nervous debilitation, disappointment, discouragement. He was desperate, let down, run down and break down. That was a time he needed God in his life. Probably somebody here you may think I am all sufficient. Hallelujah. I don't lack anything. God has blessed me with everything. Hallelujah. I am strong, hale and healthy in my body. Friend, I tell you, someday or other, you need help from God. Because God says, you cannot do anything without me. Somebody shout, Amen. Today you may be sufficient for the battles of life But a day is coming my friend When you lose your strength When you lose all human support When you come to the end of the tether When you come to the end of the robe When you come to a closed door And there's no one to help you You need God in your life Hallelujah The Lord says my son my daughter Without me you cannot do anything How many of you believe this morning? Church, can we stand up to your feet? I feel the wonderful presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Elijah was a rough and rugged man. Yet he was so very depressed. He needed God in his life. He needed the help of God. He needed to heed something from heaven above. Hallelujah. You can criticize Elijah today. You can find fault with him today. You can denounce him today. You can say that he is not trusting God as he should. But friend, if that could happen to Elijah, how much more it can happen to you and me? Amen. Such a rough, rugged man. He needed God in his life. I want to tell you this morning, you and I need God. Amen. Without him, we cannot do anything. Every eye closed right now. Heavenly Father, we once again praise and thank you this morning. We are so thankful to you, God, for your presence. Thank you for ministering to us this morning. For thou knowest we are a group of needy people. Lord, thou knowest our standing. Thou knowest our sitting. Thou knowest our down rising. Lord, thou knowest everything. Thou knowest God deep down in our heart. How we are depressed, discouraged and disappointed. Sometimes driven to a state of despondency, God. Father, but we know one thing that you are more than enough. You are with us and all sufficient God with El Shaddai. You're an unfailing God. You're so faithful. You're so compassionate and so very concerned. Lord, as a servant this morning, I pray there are some people in this congregation. They are so deep down in their hearts. They are depressed. They are wounded in the spirit. Lord, they are so down in the spirit, God. Master, they feel so lonely at times. Father, I pray for such people this morning. I pray that we will stand for their hand and minister to them right now. I pray God that we will hold on to the right hand and lift them up. And Father, I pray that we will bring them out of depression. I pray God that we will fill them with your joy unspeakable. That you will fill them with peace that passeth all understanding. Father, right from this day that will ground them victory. Hallelujah. And you will take them from strength to strength and from glory to glory. Father, I pray that you will gird them with thy divine strength and grace. Father, that their spirit will be lifted up. Father God, I pray that your mighty anointing will rest upon them because your word says, Lord, because of anointing, the yoke shall be broken. Every yoke of Satan Every yoke of depression Every yoke of discouragement Be broken in the name of Jesus Hallelujah That your people will be filled with your joy And they will be filled with new confidence And hope And even as they walk out of a sanctuary Not the same way they came in But they will walk out with you God In sure confidence and assurance That you are with them and you are for them Be coming them into your care and keeping I pray for this entire congregation this morning. Pray that you will continue to speak and minister to us, God. We must decrease. You alone must increase. All glory and honor be ascribed to thy holy name, Father. For we ask all these things in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.